People think we have to go to a foreign country as a missionary if we want to have a great reward in heaven. True, that is one way, but it's not the only way. Others think of martyrdom and persecution. Yes, Jesus did say in Luke 6, 23, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But that's not the only way. In Matthew 6, 1-4, you're rewarded for not doing your alms before men, but doing them in secret. In Matthew 6, 6, God rewards praying to the Father in secret. And in Matthew 16, 27, Jesus is very clear. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. But I want to talk to you about one you can put into practice every single day. Does that interest you? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. I don't care that so many preachers and youth ministers have stood behind a pulpit to tell you that gospel tracks, Chick tracks even, don't work. You're looking at the result of just one. By now I probably read all of them, but it took only one and one person to make all the difference in my life. I was nine years old in Ontario, California. I was raised to believe I was a Christian, though no one ever talked to me about a gospel message. We were born Christians, and that's that. I was in fourth grade and started attending Nishiren Shoshu Sokagakai Buddhist meetings on a Friday or Saturday night when my dad picked us up. And on Sundays, we went to the Religious Science Church in Claremont. So I told my classmates I was half Christian, half Buddhist. I even tape recorded a meeting, starting with the ding of the bell, ding, and everybody sang in unison, nam yo harengekyo, nam yo harengekyo, nam yo harengekyo, and then reading the 40-something page prayer book. It was all foreign words sounded out in English letters. I had no idea we were really praying Buddha's Lotus Sutra. So picture this, on weekends with my dad, we went to Nishin Shoshu Soka Gakai NSA, the other NSA, Nishin Shoshu of America, and on Sundays with him to Religious Science Church, and on Sundays home with my grandparents, we went to Bethel Congregational Church in Ontario, and I got to hear some watered-down kind of Christianity that never explained the gospel. So I was all over the map. If someone wanted to talk to me about the gospel, did he or she first have to learn the meaning of the prayers in Buddhism? Or the history of Buddha? Or of Nishiren Shoshu? Did they need to do research by Ernest Holmes, The Science of Mind? Did they need to look up the denominational distinctives of the Congregational Church? or the World Council of Churches. No. All I needed was for someone to tell me the truth. And one day, a guy did just that. Now, now all the trees and bushes are cleared away, but the grass is still there. I used to sit there and read or talk to my friend Steve as he folded papers for his paper route. Hmm. In later years, I tried to learn guitar sitting under one of the trees. That day, I was just sitting there, and I have no idea why. Then a guy came out of the alleyway. I have no idea where he came from before that. He came over to me, and that was easy because I was the only person there at the time. And it was cool because I was right in front of my apartment. And he said, would you like to read a comic? And I said, yeah. And he said, would you read it to me? And this guy, maybe mid-40s, whom I'd never seen before in my life, watches me as I read out loud the tract, This Was Your Life. Now, you could 
try to take apart this track six ways of, from Sunday, you could come up with any number of objections to the comics, depictions of God, the way it was drawn, um, the verses used or not used, the angels having wings, when exactly the word arise happens in human history, etc. But none of that matters. It's a comic. Two, it's not written as a treatise on theology. It's a salvation tract. Three, it's a story. It's to engage a reader like me, to get me thinking honestly about eternity, recognize I'm a sinner, and make a choice, hopefully, to trust Jesus for his amazing gift that can wash away my sins by his shed blood on the cross. If the track can do that, connect me to the fact that I'm a sinner, that I need a Savior, and that I can believe on Jesus Christ and accept his free gift and be saved for all eternity, it works despite the defects. And that's exactly what it did. Now, how hard was that really? The guy didn't even show me his Bible. He just gave me a tract. Reading the tract and thinking about it did the job. The one thing the man did afterward was to ask me, would you like to receive Jesus as your savior? And I said, yeah. And he had me read the prayer on page 23 from my heart. Did I need a theological treatise on the characteristics of the Godhead? No. Did I need a full soteriological description of the process of salvation? No. All I needed was to deal with God, coming to him with faith as a child, which I was already, I was nine, and trust Jesus' sacrifice for my salvation, ask him to forgive me and save me. That's it. What happened afterwards would fill a book, as all our lives would. But regardless of what came later, I got something settled on June 7th, 1972, as I wrote it on that line on the track back then, 6-7-1972. Does that sound so hard? Of course not. Does it sound like it didn't work? Or it wouldn't take? Here I am, almost 47 years later. It worked for me. We have thousands of testimonies over the years. It worked for them too. I'm not going to put down anyone. Preachers and assistants were told in Bible college or seminary that chick tracks don't work. They just believed the mistaken notion and told that story to the next generation. But that's all it is, the story. And anyone can do this. These booklets are missionaries that do the job, whether you're there or not. But it's good if you are. Remember what Jesus said in Luke 15:10. I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So winning souls to Christ is a sure way to get rewards in heaven. Proverbs 11.30 The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. All that man did, whom I never saw again, nor did he give me his name, was give me a chick track and be there while I read it. I have no idea if he had a theological degree from an accredited college. He just sat there. He was just there. And he scattered the seed of the gospel in a chick tract. Can you do that? Can you do scattered seeds? Can you hand out, place, stash, offer chick tracks to everyone you know? Can you offer it to strangers when you pay your bill? I sure do. I know they work. And just one was all it took for God to use it to save my soul. If I'd have died right then, my eternity was secured. 
I want to have great reward in heaven. Along with everything else I try to do to please God, I hand out gospel tracts each day to obey the great commission given us by Jesus himself. He promises to reward that kind of simple obedience. It's totally worth the effort to me. Is it worth it to you? God bless you and have a wonderful day.